Hey, welcome to this tutorial. Uh, we're going to go ahead and work on modeling a water bottle using a, a metallic kind of reusable water bottle, making a um, using a reference image. And so here we are in Blender. We're going to go ahead and delete our cube, our default cube. It's innocent, but we do not need it. So I'm going to left click, click X and choose delete. Let me turn my uh, screencast tools on here. Um, we should hopefully see those right down here in the bottom left so you can look at the um, mouse icon and, and any of the keys should show up here so the first thing we need to do is we need to add an image um, a reference image so i've already got it saved to this computer um, and so i'm going to go down to image reference and select it I, I believe i have it saved on my desktop so there it is and i'll have um, linkedin canvas this image for you to be able to get onto your computer so whichever computer you're running blender on you need to get this on here so if you're remoting in make sure you get it onto the remote computer through um, google and through chrome okay so i'm going to load this guy up it, it basically comes in perpendicular to my viewport so you can see it's it's kind of at a weird angle um i'm going to go ahead and hit alt r so alt r uh, that resets the rotation and you can see down here it just basically in the it zeroed out all of the rotation. So now I'm gonna go ahead and flip it along the red axis right here uh, in order to get it to stand up straight. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and left click to lock that in and then I'm gonna just move it using G to grab it and Y just to push it back a little bit off the workspace. Now I'm gonna come around towards the front. So I'm gonna hit my Y button up here and make sure right now uh, the back and the front look the same because um, we see the same picture. So I'm in back right now. I need to flip it. All right, there we go. Now I'm in front and I'm going to move this so that the edge of the bottle right here matches the red axis. So I'm going to lift this back up. Uh, oops, I hit hide. My bad. Uh, G and Z is going to lift. Oops. G and Z is going to lift that up. There we go, and I'd like to kind of get it centered um, as well. Um, we can see that the 3D or the origin, my 3D cursor is actually kind of the middle point. So I'm going to use G and X in order to slide this over and try and get it uh, right in the middle. Okay, so now we're largely ready to start. Um, we're going to create a circle and uh, and then we're going to size that circle to sort of match the width of the water bottle, and then we'll start doing our modeling. So I'm going to hit Shift uh, A. Uh, and I am going to choose circle. And I can see the circle goes from the left here all the way to the right here. I'm going to, I'm looking at it from the side, so that's why it looks like a line. Uh, I'm going to hit S and scale that down and try and get that to match the water bottle. I can see I'm still a little bit off here. So I am going to use G and X in order to try and. It is difficult for me to see. Let's give that a try and see. All right, I'm gonna to have to come off of my side angle here to get a look at it. There we go. So um, this is our circle. It's roughly the same width. I might have to do a little bit more once I once I start extruding. But let's go ahead and uh, go into edit mode. So we can go up here and click on the left. Uh, and edit mode, you can actually tab, use the tab key to flip back and forth between object and edit mode. So you know you're in edit mode. I've got all of these vertices selected because I am in vertex select mode, um, which is fine for what I'm doing. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and go to face. Um, well, I need at least to fill it in. So let's go with edge. And um, once you have it selected or highlighted here, Okay, and you can box select it as well if you want to, but you can hit F and you can see it fills that face in. Now that we've got that face in there, I can go to face select. So got to have a face before you go to face select, I suppose. And um, now I'm kind of ready to, to, to extrude this up, but I want to see how it matches up with my reference image. I'm going to go back and click Y a couple times to make sure I'm in front or the graphic view. And I'm going to hit the E button and lift this guy up. You can still see I'm kind of off a little bit there. Um, it's a little left. Um, I'm going to bring it over to the right a little bit. So I'm going to hit uh, G and X and just kind of slide it over. Oops, just my top. I'm going to go into object mode. 
There we go. And so now I've got the whole object. So it's a little easier to move the whole thing over. There we go. It's pretty good, actually. And seeing a little on each side, it's not terrible. There we go. Okay. So it's up here, uh, and I'm going to move up here where things get a little more interesting. I'm going to go back into edit mode. Um, and so I'm going to want to bring this up, and I'm going to alternate between extruding and scaling. So I'm going to hit E and extrude up. And then um, right about here is where it's going to start angling. So I'm going to stop there, left click to lock it. And then I'm going to go E and extrude up. And then left click to lock and then S to scale. And I'm going to pull that in to try and match the, um, the sides here. And I actually want to follow it a little more closely than that to get a nice shoulder on it. So I'm going to hit Control Z. And I'm going to come back down here and then hit E. I'm going to come up and do a smaller so I can kind of keep it a little tighter. So E, come up like a centimeter, and then S. Left click E, up, left click to lock, S. Tilt it in to follow the contour, left click to lock, E to come up, left click to lock, S, pull it in. Okay, that followed it pretty well, and we keep going. E. This one looks like it kind of comes in a little bit. And then E. That looks good about there, so I'm not going to scale it. I'm going to go E, and here's where it starts to flare out. So I'm going to left click to lock, and then S to scale. And I can go out. And then E to come up. And then this next part looks like it kind of comes in. So I'm going to hit scale and kind of bring that in. All right, so that is our water bottle model here. Uh, we're gonna put two finishing touches on it. I've gotta go to object mode to put these touches on. So I'm gonna go over here and click object. I wanna subdivide it um, in order to make the more geometry here so that it's a little smoother. You can see it's all kind of, there's little grids and lines here. And uh, so I'm gonna go over to my, uh, it's called my modifier properties, which is the blue, um, wrench over here and I'm going to click add modifier and under the oops under the generate uh, if I go all the way near the bottom it's alphabetical so I'm going to S's down here there's subdivision modifier and it splits you see if you hover over it it says it splits the face oops there we go split the face into smaller parts giving a smoother appearance and that's exactly what I want to do so I'm going to click that and up here if you um I'm going to stretch this out a little bit so you can see these are the levels of the viewport. So what, how I'm seeing it, this is what actually it's going to render as. So I want to increase both of these to three so I can see what it looks like in the viewport. And I want to get, a, I want to go ahead and add that other layer of, of, or other bits of geometry in there. So I'm going to click off of this. Uh, and, oh, you can see here that it curved that down to a point. So I am going to exit out of that. Um, I had done some finishing work on the bottom that I neglected. So let me come back down here and go back into edit mode and select this face. So you do have to be in face select mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this down a little bit. So I'm going to use S or excuse me, E uh, to come down a little bit. And then I'm going to use S in order to bring it in because bottles don't typically just come. They're not totally flat on the bottom. So this will probably keep that from happening when I do the subdivision modifier. So, all right, let me go back and give that subdivision modifier a try here. I'm gonna go back into object mode and click add subdivision surface. I wanna hit three for both of these. All right, that looks much better. You can see it's much smoother now. It's not crimping the bottom down into a point. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, and then um, to apply, you might have an apply button up here if you're using um, 2.8, uh, 2.9, it kind of tucks it in here. So you gotta come find it in here. So you can come in here and apply it. And then the last bit we're gonna do for the bottle is if you right click uh, on the bottle in object mode, you should see in the object context menu, shade smooth at the very top, smooth that out. All right, we got a bottle here. All right, so now we need to do the cap. So let's go ahead and do the cap. Um, I am going to do the cap from the top view. So I'm going to come up here and click Z or Z. And it's going to it's going to have me come down here. And I'm looking right here at the cap. 
um, or the actually it's the top of the water bottle. It's where I want to place my cap. I'm going to use, you can use shift right click on your mouse, okay, to move your cursor, your 3D cursor around. So um, I'm going to move it here in the center uh, and I'm going to add a circle just like I did for the water bottle. So I'm going to come up, you can come up and click add mesh circle and scale it down. And you want it kind of a little smaller than the other circle. You want a little lip around it. That looks pretty good. It's close to the center. You might grab it, adjust it a little bit. All right. So uh, it was probably fine the way it was, and then I moved it. So there we go. Okay, so now that we've got this in here, um, we're going to go into edit mode. Uh, I do want to fill it, so I'm going to hit F right away to fill it. Uh, and um, I'm going to make the little seal. Um, so I'm going to come back up into front mode. And you see there's this white seal back here. So I'm going to hit E to extrude up and that's going to be my seal right there. Now, in order to get a little lip over here, if I want a lip, and I do, I'm going to actually use Shift D to duplicate the face, uh, the top, and then widen it using S to scale. Um, so I'm going to hit Shift D and S, and you can see I can make that circle a bit bigger. So there we go. That way I got a little lip on each side, and now I'm going to hit E extrude and just come all the way up to the top and now I've got a cap on there. Now it's not the same type of cap as in the reference picture so we're going to carve it up a little bit. So here's how we carve it. We're going to go into Z mode here, uh, top view. And when you're in top view we want to go to vertex because we're going to be playing with points and cutting things based on where the vertexes are, vertices. So I know that this is basically my center uh, vertex, like it's in the center right here. I want to cut a line from this dot to this dot, from this vertex to this vertex, and then from this vertex to this vertex to have that, that top. And then I'm going to dissolve these um, vertices that aren't on the top uh, in order to sort of create the shape that we're going for here. So um, let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to go find our knife tool. So we're in edit mode, and if you use the double arrow, you can drag out your tools and see that the knife is right here. So. And your cursor actually changes to a knife. Okay, so we want to get the one above the center mark and come over. And you can see it sort of snaps onto that vertex right there. And then and notice you, it wants to keep cutting. So I'm going to hit enter to stop the cut. And then that leaves me with the edge. Over here you can see I have two vertices I'm going to have to fix. Those should really be one vertice or vertex. So I'm going to go ahead and make my cut um, here. Snap onto that one hit enter to finish my cut. All right, and now I'm gonna go up here to select box and I'm gonna come in um, so you can see here, I've got two points. I'm gonna box select those points, right click and merge them at center because I only want one point there. Same for the one over here. So I did not hit the point exactly. So you just wanna make sure that there's one point. If you hit it with a knife exactly, it might actually only be one point, um, but you wanna check for that because it'll mess up your geometry otherwise. All right, so now let's go back up to the top view. Uh, I'm using shift select. Actually, you could probably use box select and select all of these up here above the line. And then you can right click and come all the way to the bottom and find dissolve vertices. That'll dissolve that top edge. Uh, and then down here, we can do the same thing. Um, oops, I missed a few. So let me get those in there. So I've box selected all of those. I can right click and choose dissolve vertices. And now if you take a look, our shape is about the way we want it. Now there are um, sloping sides in our reference picture. So these, these angle a little bit. So if you want that angle going, you can keep it square if you want to. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and come up to Z and I'm gonna go ahead and grab just the top points, hopefully. I accidentally grabbed the bottom one down here, so you gotta be careful. I've got those three, and this is the red axis, so I can hit G to grab an X and just slide that in a little bit. And then I could come over here to this side and grab those three, hit G, X, and push them in a bit, and then kind of come up to Z to see if they're about the same. They look like they're pretty much about the same. Got a little slant on it now. Now I just need to punch the hole. So we're done with uh, the, the carving part, except for punching a hole in the middle. So here's how we punch a hole. Um, we're going to go ahead and go into object mode. Um, we've got the cap selected here. 
Uh, we're looking at it from the, from the, I'm going to go ahead and make sure we're looking at it from the front. So we're in the front orthographic view. And I'm going to use shift right click to get my cursor here because I want my cylinder to show up right here. We're going to use a cylinder to punch a hole in there. So I'm going to hit shift A, go to mesh, go to cylinder, and I'm going to scale that guy down okay, a bit. He's facing the wrong way. I need to rotate him around the x-axis 90 degrees. So you could come down here and just click 90. Okay, and now you can see it's facing the right direction. If I turn to the side, it's not long enough. So I need in the y direction for it to scale. So I'm gonna hit SY, scale it out. I don't care that it's even or anything. I just need to make sure it's, it's perpendicular to the face here. So it's gonna make a hole. And if I look at it from the front, there we go. Um, I can see whether it's positioned the way I want it to. I think this is probably okay. It's a little high. Uh, I could come down a little bit, so I could use G and Z, bring it down a little bit. Um, all right, I'm happy with that. So now I need to actually punch the hole. Well, for that, we want to select our what we're punching the hole in, which is our cap, and we're in object mode. Uh, we're going to go to our blue wrench, and we're going to add modifier and choose Boolean, which is the third one down in the generate list. And we could intersect, use union or difference. What we want to do is use difference to make a hole here. So it's probably on difference as a default, but if not, make sure to select difference. Okay, so if it's on one of these other ones, select difference. The hole, we got to figure out what's going to make the hole. So we have to identify that for Blender. So there's an eyedropper here as well as there's this little icon. If you click the icon, you can just choose cylinder and it chooses the cylinder. You also could, if it's not there, you can click the eyedropper and come and select the cylinder and it'll put the cylinder there. Either way, you got your cap selected and then difference and Boolean selected and the cylinder is what's doing the cutting and then you need to apply it. So we're going to go up here. I have to click apply in the drop down. Okay. And if I come up and I click X and delete my cylinder, you can see that there's a hole there. So now I've really got this pretty much about the way I want it. Um, it's still got these lines in here. I want to smooth it out to make it look like plastic. So I'm going to uh, click it in object mode, right click and choose shade smooth. And then that rounds things out a little bit kind of nicely. So it looks a little bit more like the cap in the picture. And so we've got everything modeled at this point. We can come in um, and put in some materials here. And uh, very quickly, let's go ahead and select the water bottle. And we're going to go into um, material preview. So you do need to come up and click the material preview or you won't see any colors. Okay. So this puts some artificial light and everything on it. And now we could come down to the little beach ball looking icon, the material properties. We could add a new material. I'm going to double click in here and call it bottle. Um, and I'm going to scroll down into the principled shader. There's only a few things we need to mess with. One is we want it to be metallic, so we're going to slide this all the way to one. And you can see it's already looking metallic. It's got some roughness down here, and you can actually lower roughness to get it to be nice and reflective. So it's already starting to look like metal. That looks like a nice silver metal. If you want another color, you come up to base color, and you just click, and you can choose a color. So choose a color that you like. Just make sure it's metallic. That's the only technical requirement. Um, I'm going to leave this one green. I think that looks good. And then I've got to apply some materials to my cap up here. So I'm going to choose the cap. Uh, I'm going to go over to my materials, click new. I'll double click up here, cap. I'm going to make mine black and plastic. So I can choose my base color. And to get black, you just slide the bar down here. And you can already see it's looking pretty good. Uh, I'm going to come down here and I want to lower the roughness because plastic is pretty smooth and the light's going to hit it and that's looking pretty plasticky. As a finishing detail though, I would like to take this and turn the seal white just so there's a little contrast in there. So because it's part of the uh, cap, we need to go back into edit mode. So we're in edit mode now and actually I want to be in face mode. So I'm going to choose face select because I want to turn each of these white. So I'm going to come in here and make a new surface, a new new material. So right now I've got the cap material, but I'm going to click plus to create a new slot and click new. And here I'm going to put seal. That's going to be the seal. And I want it to be white, but I do want it to be shiny. So I'm going to lower roughness, which increases shininess. 
but I don't want to, and I can use this assign button up here to assign it, but I, I don't like having to assign it, like you have to go seal and then assign and then seal and assign because you're changing it basically. So one way to do this more quickly is if you hold down alt and you select, um, sometimes it takes a bit, uh, let's see, there we go. Uh, if you click around a little bit, it'll often complete the loop. It'll loop everything, take the entire loop of faces. So now I can take all of those now that they're selected, choose seal and click assign. And then I go back into object mode and you could pan out a bit and you can see, and we can hide this reference page. We're eventually want to get rid of it, but up here in our um, outliner, we can click hide and you can get a sense of your bottle there. You can even shift right click to get your 3D mouse out of the way, or you can go up here and click uh, overlay and toggle overlays off. So you're just seeing the object. So pretty good. Um, so there we go. There's our, our water bottle from beginning to end. Um, hopefully this was helpful for you. Rewind as you need to, pause it as you need to, reach out and ask me questions as you need to. So thanks for your time and attention, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.